on the goose. Got you feeling loose, loose. Blame it on the drum. Got you being a gun. Blame it on the alcohol. Blame it on the. Read him, son. What do you? Uh, you got anything to drink? Yes, sir, Mr. Lopez. Absolutely, Mr. Lopez. Help yourself to some water. It's where the dripping sound is coming from. At your leisure. Is there a... What's with Neil Diamond? Uh, I thought that was you. Ah. <laughs> uh. Well, I'm flattered. He's a good-looking guy. What's wrong? What's this business about me having a schizophrenic? It's 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 legal jargon. It says that I have a schizophrenic mind. I do not. That's not what I think. Nathaniel, they they, they try to put people in in a. I'm not going anywhere. And the good news is it has well, nothing to do with. Where you say go, I go where I want to go. Okay. You don't put me away, Mr. Lopez. You don't put me away. Okay. Okay. You don't put me away. Chill. You good? You good? What up, Juan? Come on, you ready. Okay. Jamie, man. What's Another crack? great movie. Man, trying to hang in there, man. Hey, first off, man, I heard that you had some, some, some stalker problems and you had to get them off, up off you. you yeah, think? we got it. We got it together, you know. Shoot. Things gonna help I'm you break sales. I heard you had to put your hands on them, man. Yeah, you know how it is. It always boosts a little bit on your record sales. Too bad I ain't rapping. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? If I was Lil Wayne, that might give me an extra hundred thousand. <laughs> but we good now. Tell me about the soloist, man. How, tell hey, me man. about when you when you first got the script. I'm gonna tell you this. I always had a childhood fear of going crazy. There was a, a sanitarium in my hometown uh, called the Terrell State Hospital. We used to have to visit there, and I would see the people. I'd be like, as a kid, I'd be like, man, I hope that will never happen to me. When I was 18 in college, somebody slipped me something. College prank, but it went bad. I ended up going to the hospital. 11 months I tripped. White boy from Nebraska was my roommate. Talked to me every night, said, dude, you here, you cool, you straight. So I always give him props for that. It mirrored exactly what this was about. So when I took the role, I was like, man, I need to holler at a psychiatrist, which most African Americans don't do. But uh, he explained to me that I can't catch, I asked him, can I catch schizophrenia? He said, no, you can't catch it. He said, but what you've gone through is just a post-traumatic stress thing. So I said, well, I'm going to use you to pull me out because I want to go into this character deep. And so we did it. Got a chance to meet Nathaniel, which really changed my mind about it because he was really, he was a G about it. He was like, man, I'm not suffering from nothing. This is just the cards I've been dealt. But when I play my music, when I talk to my homie, Steve Lopez, everything is good. So there it is. And then you, uh, you, you couple it with Robert Downey Jr., great music, Joe Wright, you got something. You think that there's maybe a lot of people that have that same fear as you and maybe this movie would open their eyes for what yeah. schizophrenia really is? Most definitely because a lot of people, you know, like, especially when I talk about, like, my culture, like, urban culture, like, we're not really known for going to therapists or seeking help or things like that, but this may open up some ideas about that. And also, it shines a light on the homeless situation, but it shows the fact that somebody could be in a situation like Nathaniel and still still make it happen for himself. I mean, he just held on, man. You know, finally runs into Steve Lopez. They both hold on to each other, and then next thing you know, we're doing a movie about it. So hopefully it'll make people reboot their computer, especially with what we're going through in the financial situation, that maybe it ain't as bad as we think it is when you look at somebody like this who's homeless or whatever like that, then, you know, we can get our stuff together. work as hard as I can to clean up hey, the town. They just won't respect it. Beethoven is the leader of the Angeles, and I try to tell every one of them, I'll have you. Yo, go, 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 go. I'm not gonna have this nastiness in this tunnel, this degradation. Good. People heard that you were just playing with two strings. Some of them thought you might want something better to work with. No, I, I can't cover that. And you don't have to pay for it. It's a gift.
know you're a great musician yourself. Yeah, yeah. Thanks. But you had to become a celloist and yeah, a violinist yeah, yeah. for this movie. What was your process in? Just to get in the hours of putting it in so so it made so it made sense. So it became like like how I play the piano. You know, I want it to be second nature. But music is always, you know, is my thing. You know, even with like what we're doing, how we experience the music now, we blame it and what it's doing. You know, and, and intuition. Yeah, blame it is like <laughs> it's about to be number one uh, pop now. So you know, we just you know the music is everything. Thank you, Jamie. My man. In a minute. Okay. <laughs> we'll get it next time.